Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome all the online participants. It is my great pleasure to welcome you here this morning. We appreciate you taking time off your beauty schedule to join us today for the online seminar on Asia and the Pacific Regional Dialogue on Science and Technology for a Sustainable Food System, Session 3. On action toward more sustainable food system, we hope you will find a program we have lined up for you to be fruitful and, and engaging. The objective of this seminar is to increase knowledge and understanding of food loss and waste and sustainable food economy in APEC economies context. Also to share experience, identifying challenge and opportunity of APEC economy regarding reducing food loss and food waste for addressing interlinked challenge of food security and climate change, as well as sustainable food economy through SDI research collaboration and exploring a potential partnership with the stakeholder. I would like to introduce myself. So my name is Saran Yulamla. I am an international relations officer at NASDA. Before we start, I would like to ask our keynote speaker for your permission to publish your photos and video recording during the seminar for communication and development purpose. Furthermore, I would like to inform all attendees that during the event, your camera will be disabled and your microphone will be muted after us to prevent unwanted noise and commotion. However, you can send your questions to our panelists and our speaker in the Q&A session by opening the Q&A panel, typing your question in the text box, and then clicking send. To kick off this morning program, we are privileged and honored to have uh, Mr. Somchuan Ratana Mangkalanon, Deputy Permanent, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative to deliver an opening remark. Uh, we, we cannot hear the voice, sorry. Uh, yeah, please wait a moment. Um, Uh, please well, wait a moment. We apologize for our technical issues. อ่าเราเราจะทุกการที่จะอ่านบทสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุปสรุป
Uh, we apologize for our technical issues, uh, and and we we can come back to our opening session later. For now, I think uh, I would like to introduce our moderator of today's session, Doctor Juanita Gumner uh, Pet. Director, Bureau of Foreign Agriculture Affairs, Office of Permanence, Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative of MOA, Thailand. Dr. Wanida, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody from Bangkok. Sorry for any technical uh, difficulties, but we will fix it later. Uh, later on, if you're ready, we will come back to the opening uh, remark session. Today, I am very honored to be part of this event. I'm Vanida Kamnerpet, uh, Director of Bureau of Foreign Agricultural Affairs, Office of Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative of Thailand. Today, today even, it's the co host by the two ministries, uh, MOAC Agriculture, as well as the Ministry of uh, Higher Education, Science and Technology. And the, the agency that working as the organizer is the National Science Technology Development Agency. As the APEC economy moving forward toward the end of this year, and we closer closer to the leader summit, there's a lot of working uh, meeting, working group, ongoing uh, activities in order to come up with a concrete action from all APEC economies. Sustainable food system is one of the issues that at the global levels, in order to address the achievement to sustainable development goals by 2030, we need to transform food system in order to achieve SDG. Which one of that is focused on the food itself, the security, the safety, the people and the environment. Under APEC, there's quite a number of working groups 
and this dialogue today, we're very honored to get our very distinguished expert from various economies and various disciplines in order to share not only their expertise, but to share their work at national, international, and their work within APEC fora from a policy partnership of food security, which is Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives, leading that working group by Office of Agricultural Economics. Policy partnership on science, technology, and innovation, leading by NASDA, National Science Technology and Development Agency. As well as we have the issue on blue economy that come from Ocean and Fishery Working Group. So this one is a forum to chair, to learn, and to figure out how we can work interconnected and across sectoral, across discipline, and use our expertise, science, technology, and innovation at its best to serve the people, to serve the planet, and prosper together under the theme of the APEC 2022 Open Connect, Connect and Balance. The session this morning, we divide into two sessions. The first half is about the policy. The second half is the case study, where the implementation, the implementation of action on the ground. So I would like to take this opportunity, opportunity to introduce our distinguished speakers. The first one is Ms. Monica Rohanwak. She's a veterinary by experience and work extens extensively in the public sector. She's the head of International Affairs Unit at the National Fisheries and Aquaculture Service, Sena Pesca Shelley. She's been involved in the development and implementation of regulatory procedures in the field of food safety control and expert certification of aquaculture and fishery products. Currently, she in charge of the International Affairs Unit and she represents the Chile economies in the Ocean Fishery and Fishery Working Group. And this time, she as the chairwoman of that group and she's the leadership of the group. We were honored to have you, Ms. Monica. Another one on the policy from the International Fora, the Global Fora, and the APEC Fora. We have the honor to have Dr. Thawan Tanjai. He's the Deputy Director of the Department of Fisheries, Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives of Thailand. He's been trained and experienced in all facets under the fisheries and aquaculture policy, industry, research that cover and represent the competent authority of Thailand under the fisheries. We are very honored to have him to chair the national experience, how you translate, translate the international agreement context commitment into national context. So no, no further ado on this time, I would like to invite Ms. Monica to share with us what about blue economy, what it is, because this one maybe is limited, limited to some sector, some people. As a fora here, how can as an outsider to understand what is it, what are you doing, and how can we be part of it? Ms. Monica, the floor is your Please share your slide presentation and the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, slides on. Please proceed. Thank you. Can you turn on your microphone? Please. 
เสียงหายอ่ะฮัลโหลคุณยังฟังฉันไหมใช่เราสามารถฟังคุณได้แล้วโอ้ขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมากขอบคุณมาก And uh, good morning and good afternoon to all the participants gathered today. Uh, I would like to start by thanking you kind invitation to this webinar on the frame of the regional dialogue on science and technology for a sustainable food system to present the vision and the, on the blue economy of the ocean and fisheries working group, as well as the work that has been carried out by the group in this area. Next slide, please. <clears throat> As you know, the concept of the blue economy is intimately linked to the ocean sustainability. Considering that the ocean covers 70% of the planet, it provides us countless environmental benefits and is part of the lives of 3 billion people who, de who depend on marine and coastal biodiversity for their livelihoods. In line with that, I would like to start by taking a reference based on the declaration within the framework of the Sustainable Blue Economy Invest Investment Forum about the 2022 SDG Progress Report that points that while there has been encouraging progress made in the implementation of some aspects of Goal 14, Life Below Water, Our collective efforts are not approaching the scale needed to make the ambition plans a reality by the set deadline of 2030. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Considering the nature of the ocean and life both inside and outside, we can agree without a doubt that the challenge is global and joint initiatives have made a difference in resource management and sustainability of the ecosystem. 
And the only way to advance in the achievement of positive results is to work globally. The nature of the ocean as a shared ecosystem and the multiple roles it plays in climate, biological diversity of species, fisheries and aquaculture, food security, recreation, transportation, energy source, among others, makes essential the need to act jointly and globally. In fact, the APEC Forum focuses on economies that look to the Pacific and seeks to share experiences that allow jointly and global achievements. Undoubtedly, COVID-19 pandemic crisis has had a high impact on the progress of initiatives already in progress, but we must resume them with special determination to understand more and to do things better, to affront challenges and to find balances on the use of resources harmoniously considering cultural realities and different scales. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. <laughs> Thank you. Well, getting into blue economy then, just a general overview and approach. The blue economy is a relatively new concept and in continual evolving due in part to the transborder nature and prominent involvement of multiple actors. The world is increasingly understanding its importance. Policymakers and research institutions worldwide are demanding further and improved analysis of the blue economy. It covers all economic activities related to oceans, seas and coasts. It includes traditional sectors, such, such as fisheries, tourism, and aquaculture, but also new areas, such as ocean energy, biotechnology, or desalinization, for example. Next slide, please. In the context of blue economy concept, here I'd like to bring up some concrete aspects that are part of it. It uses smart shipping to lessen the impacts on the environment, is inclusive and improves the lives of all, is based on sustainable fisheries, promotes harmless renewable energy, creates jobs, advances on poverty and hunger eradication, include actions again against illegal fishing, conserves marine life and oceans, protect coastal communities from the impacts of climate change, and tackles marine litter and oceans pollution. Next slide, please. When we think on how to create the blue economy, a good reference for these are the five crucial areas where the G20 identify as benefits from invest, investment in ocean-based climate actions to create a blue economy. Maritime renewable energy sources includes offshore wind generations, floating solar arrays, and wave and tidal power contributes to, make, to meet emissions reduction commitments under the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Also, we must decarbonize global shipping. Emerging technologies can vastly reduce emissions from vessels and port facilities. New standards to assure best practices are being developed internationally, as zero emission fuels, incent incentive low carbon ports to support clean shipping, and strengthen regulations within the International Maritime Organization. Also, coastal wetland and ecosystems such as salt marshes, seagrass meadows, coral reefs, and mangrove forests need urgent protection in order to maintain their critical environmental services are as carbon sequesters. Investing in sustainable fisheries and, in particular, aquaculture will create well-paid jobs and help promote food security and economic fairness, especially in developing countries. And also sustainable and generative tourism 
can form a critical building block in ensuring a lasting economic recovery for coastal nations in a way that supports the ocean and nature and the countless people who depend on them. Next slide, please. It, it should also be noted that the fishing industry carries out actions to contribute to the sustainable man management of waste such as the recycling of discharged fishing gear, companies carry out actions of environmental education, recycling and conservation of the environment in their neighboring communities. In the same way, some actions for the sustainable exploitation of fisheries resources are the administration measures. Next slide, please issued by the fisheries authorities, as well as other actions, including measures to minimize the adverse impacts of fishing on the capture of unwanted species accompanying fauna and bycatch. Also, I would like to highlight here the recent agreement of fisheries subsidies reached in the WTO after over 20 years of negotiations that will allow to fight more strongly against the depletion of marine resources, banning subsidies to operators related to IUU fishing activities. Next slide, please. But what are the benefits of blue economy? Special consideration in the line of development and implementation of green energy sources and fight climate change. Blue economy has the power to obtain better governance of marine ecosystems, lower emissions, a more just health standard, and be a player in fighting climate change. In the recent years, emerging sectors within energy have grown exponentially and oceans are popular sites for renewable energy. Next slide, please. Key elements for the work in blue economy policy are governance, common rules, decisions based on science, innovation, capacity building, and is essential the involvement and participation of the business sector and stakeholders who often promote changes faster. They will allow progress in sustainability and forge the foundations for the blue economy. In this point, I would like to emphasize the scope of possibilities offered within the APEC fora, allowing economies to facilitate dialogues and collaboration among the governments, private sector, finance sector, and academia. Also, recently, we have seen how the projects are including young people who are called to promote the necessary technological transition with their credit creativity and tools to advance in the challenges towards sustainability and blue economy. Also articulating the work with other green initiatives as, as the biocircular green economy introduced by Thailand for inclusive and sustainable growth. Next slide, please. Well, with all this background, and general information about the blue economy, I would like to recall the mission of the Ocean and Fisheries Working Group to support APEC's mission to foster sustainable economic growth, development and prosperity in the Asia Pacific region. The Ocean and Fisheries Working Group works focused in facilitate free and open trade in the region and promotes the sustainable use of fisheries, aquaculture and marine ecosystem resources and related goods and services. Also promotes cooperation among its members, governments, academia, private industry and regional and international organizations to advance in this process. To contextualize the work of the ocean and fisheries in the blue economy, I would like to refer to 2014 and Siamen Declaration, which establishes an integrated and sustainable joint ocean strategy for APEC member economies, with a particular focus on four key priority areas, coastal and marine ecosystem conservation and disaster resilience, food security and food-related trade, 
marine science, technology and innovation, and the blue economy. Thus, Ocean and Fisheries Working Group is committed to promote continued activities within APEC, which are consistent with the common view of the blue economy, as was agreed in the third Ocean and Fisheries Working Group meeting in that year. Lately, Putrajaya Vision 2014, adopted in 2020, and the Ateroa Plan of Action as a framework to implement the vision in 2021, have promoted a strong, balanced, secure, sustainable, and inclusive growth, one of the three drivers to achieve apex vision for an open, dynamic, resilient, and peaceful Asia-Pacific community, for the prosperity of all our people and future generations. This is reinforced by the call from the APEC Business Advisory Council to achieve measurable progress year, each year on the vision, including early harvest of specific outcomes of interest to business. Next slide, please. In accordance with the Ocean and Fisheries Working Group last version of the terms of reference, the following priorities have been defined. The protection of the marine environment, emergency preparedness and resiliency, inclusion of women in fisheries and aquaculture, small scale and additional fisheries and aquaculture promotion, innovation and cooperation, and the combat of IOU fishing, contributing to work and support the concept of blue economy. The Ocean and Fisheries Working Group has three valuable instruments for that, which are the roadmaps on IOU fishing, marine debris, and small scale fisheries and aquaculture, which allows to articulate initiatives presented by the economists to exchange good practices promote building capacities and collaborate with other fora. In this framework, framework, we have been able to learn that specific work such sharing experiences and promoting guidelines implementation are powerful tools to undertake and motivate changes and improvements, especially for less developed countries. Next slide, please. Also, in the Ocean and Fisheries Strategic Plan, the priorities are focused in the work areas and actions for sustainable use of the marine environment, emergency preparedness and resiliency, inclusion of women in fisheries and aquaculture, a small scale and additional fisheries and aquaculture promotion, innovation and cooperation. The objectives of the Ocean and Fisheries Working Group include the improvement of understanding of the oceans, the marine ecosystems, and their economic and social value, and promote activities within APEC, which are in accordance with the common view of the blue economy, through the implementation of the roadmaps on IOU and marine debris, as a major impact issues for oceans and marine resources sustainability. Next slide, please. To promote blue economy in APEC region since 2011, six APEC blue economy forum have been held in the frame of the APEC marine debris roadmap. Last year, the sixth APEC blue economy forum was held in Xiamen, China in November 2021. The theme of the forum was area-based blue economy practices and cooperation. The outcome of the fora were to share the latest information and area-based practices of blue economy, especially the approach of sustainable utilization of marine natural resources and realization of ecosystem services value in the coastal areas. And second, compiling the initiatives of the area-based practices and cooperation on blue economy in the APEC region. Next slide, please. 
Regarding the topic about today's invitation, I would like to stand out some final remarks related to climate change, which is, which is wreaking havoc on weather patterns around the world, producing more powerful hurricanes, floods and storm surges. Warmer waters are eating away the bases of Antarctic glaciers and killing coral reefs. Greenhouse emissions need to be reduced sharply. Most of mitigation measures are focused inland and more consideration needs to be given to the oceans. Next slide, please. So, climate change generated by human activities compromise the path towards sustainable development, which aims to safeguard the ecological support system on which the life, health, and well being of humanity depend. Therefore, the achievement of environmental sustainability requires balancing our needs of water, food, and shelter with the damage provoked by human activities to our environmental and resource. The blue economy has the potential to help economies rethink their development paths and redirect them towards new ones allowing the economic growth through innovation, new technologies, and science, unleashing the potential of the oceans to generate well-being and prosperity. And this next slide, please. Okay, this is about the final one. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I give the floor back to you, Dr. Vanidan. Oh, thank you very much, Monica. You have uh, briefed us on the journey of the blue economy, not only now, but it starts many years ago and in the concrete action within the APEC since 2014. It's been going on quite some time, and I think this time it's people outside of the blue economy learn how, how much and how concrete action is being drafted at the international, you know, with the various organizations, the UN, the WTO, and now within the APEC economies on the Ocean and Fishery Working Group has a lot of uh, activities, framework, and the roadmap to achieve what we could uh, achieve. And one thing that you show us is the what food system is all about. It's not only the food production, it's not only the transportation of food value chain that we used to uh, uh, know and then accustomed to, but includes on other sector, energy, biodiversity, climate change, well-being and livelihood with the people, and the opportunity and challenges for the new economic models. And I think that fits well when we look at how to be balanced within a big economy. We work in a sectoral at the open and connect. And then now the balance is how to balance that and have a holistic view of the food system. Thank you very much. And then we really appreciate that you be part of it. I have to tell all our participants that our speaker is very kind and within the chat notice, they agree to be part of it. And the first speaker has shown us their expertise and how we closer, closer to achieve our epic economies objective or roadmap. So that's the international Dora. So our second speaker is uh, Dr. Tawon Tanjai as the uh, Thailand Competent Authority on the Fisheries. Maybe he can elaborate, you can elaborate with us how to, you translate the international agreement, you translate the action we agree to move on at the regional, sub-regional, and in within the APEC economies. How Thailand doing that and how agriculture as part of producer be part of the blue economies. This time I would like to invite Dr. Tawan Han Jai, Deputy Director General Department of Fisheries. The floor is yours, please. 
thank you, Dr. Vanita, and uh, good morning uh, from Thailand, all speaker and participant. First of all, I would like to uh, thanks for invite invitation me to be here to chat Thailand experience in this session. Actually, uh, I think Monica has been explained to us about the economy concept uh, very clearly, uh, but uh, I would like to just refer to the United Nations, which define the blue economy uh, concept that complies a range of economic sectors and related policy that together determine whatever the use of the ocean resources is sustainable. As a sustainable blue economy in fisheries, or maritime player based their activity on the responsible use of the natural resources on decarbonization and on a circular economy a concept to set out a detailed agenda for greening the blue economy underpinned by international ocean governance facilities coexistence and energies of uh, economic activity in the maritime space to maritime spatial planning without uh, damaging the environment and to propose a serial of action to boost investment in research, skill, and innovation and mobilize financing opportunities. For fisheries and aquaculture can be vital in transition to a a blue economy or blue growth due to their interconnectivity with and reliant on aquatic ecosystem and a potential for people employed in it to act not only a resource user but also as resource stewards. Seafood are one of the most trade food commodities. To contribute to the ocean economy in Thailand was estimated using national income from Office of National Economics and Social Development Council report as a framework. In 2021, the estimated contribution of ocean economy was calculated from sum of gross provincial uh, product of GDP in 23 coastal provinces in Thailand minus production in non-marine sectors such as agriculture and forestry. The total value of ocean economy in Thailand was 4,066 billion baht or 116 billion US dollars, which is about 25% of Thailand GDP. An important challenge in sustainable blue economy policy in Thailand is to understand better manage many aspects of oceanic sustainability from sustainable fishery to ecosystem health, even the pollution. Moreover, the blue economy make us realize that the sustainable management of ocean resources require collaboration across the border and sectors through variety of the partnership. The blue economy will add in achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goal 14 or Life Below Water, Department of Fishery analyzed that the economy in Thailand from um, two major aspects, which are first marine capture and second marine culture. In marine capture production, there are two types of vessels separated by the size of the vessel in operate in uh, this category, which are commercial fishing vessel and artisanal fishing vessel. For aquaculture production and value, we can calculate. We can calculate uh, based on the four type of aquatic animals and uh, farmers, rest with archim, fish, shellfish, and crab. The major culture species include Pacific white shrimp, grand giant tiger pond, uh, Asian sea bass, groupers, green mussel, black cockle, and oyster. Most of the coastal aquaculture area is about 
70% as well as the contributed to the significant production and economic value to farmers, local communities, and local industry. In 2020, Shim Aquaculture occupied 54,730 hectares out of 103,000 uh, hectares of coastal and marine aquaculture areas, with production of the approximately 388,669 uh, tons with a value of about uh, 58 million baht. Thailand marine aquaculture animal production from the year 2011 to 2021 mostly depend on the marine capture. However, we can see trend here that marine culture production is declined from 2013 and starting slightly to increase from 2014. And this because of the chimp disease outbreaks in Thailand. When we consider the uh, carefully marine cash value in uh, increasing from 2015 in both marine culture and capture. This means marine aquatic animal production still pay an important flow for economy. Comparing proportion of marine capture and culture production between 2021 and 2011 or apart decade, we can see the proportion of capture production increase from 66% to 69% or 3% increase. Comparing proportion of marine capture and culture production between 2021 and 2011, we can see a proportion of capture production increase 66%. But um, for the value, marine culture value increasing from 38% to 48% or 10% increase. This may be because of the species of marine culture in is a very high uh, value, such as chimp, sea bass, and bluebirds. Therefore, coastal marine aquaculture has been significant contributing to the Thailand economy and to global food uh, production. Is accounted for approximately 20% 20, 20 of the total fishery production. Thailand also imports fish and fishery products from other countries. In this presentation slide, you can see increasing of import quantity and value from 2007 until 2021, partly of that because Thailand is a processing state which need to import raw material from other countries. There are a major imported uh, items such as fresh chill and frozen fish, including tuna, salmon, chim, crab, squid, which a value of a 92,348.25 uh, billion baht or uh, 2060. 2,633 uh, million US dollar probably. Thailand, Thailand as an exporting country, the export uh, quantity and export value are slightly uh, decreasing over time. There are some factors that cause the decline, such as shrimp diseases, outbreak, currency exchange English, and COVID-19 pandemic recently. However, Thailand is still one of the world's biggest fishery suppliers, especially canned tuna. Thailand exports mainly canned food, processed food, frozen fish, frozen chim, and related products. In 2021, Thailand export fishery product with a value of 53,786 million baht or about uh, 1,536 million US dollar. The objective of Thailand Blue Economy in fishery are to support funding uh, technology uh, transfer to processing 
support trade and market access, assistant aquatic animal uh, transportation assistant, promote and educate uh, fisher and farmer on sustainable fisheries practices and driving local economics. Thailand uh, policy on sustainable of fisheries since uh, our fishing fleet for both uh, commercial and artisanal uh, vessel are more than 59,000 vessels. Therefore, implementation of vessel recreation resulted in education in fishing effort for target group, both the Gulf of Thailand and Andaman Sea by using a maximum sustainable U or MSY and total allowable cash or TAC as a framework for licensing each year. To effectively eliminate IUU fishing and establish good ocean governance support the good and uh, transparency practices in the fishery industry along the supply chain, including a database that database and fishing vessel uh, registration system, dissemination and sharing of vessel information and dedication and eradication of a stateless uh, vessel, Thailand implement fisher fisheries under fisher fishery management plan or FMP to ensure that there is a balance of aquatic animal resources in Thai water between fishing effort and fish stock to a variety of measure and establish a strong monitoring and control system or MS MCS to regulate the Thai fishing vessel both operate in Thai water and oversee to ensure transparency and build credibility that such fishy, fishery is uh, legal for state measure also apply and implement uh, strengthenly. Supporting measure uh, applies uh, such as seasonal culture for three months, uh, fisheries culture period during the spawning season to reserve the cost of fishery resources. Trawler and percent are not allowed to operate within three kilometers from the shoreline under the gear restriction measures. This scheme measure are also applied to commercial fishing vessels. Artificial leaf for fish shelter is one of our measures. For aqua culture, due to the uh, relatively long history of agriculture, aquaculture in Thailand, Thailand Thai fish and chim farmer are typically skillful and entrepreneurial. Uh, since 2003, the Department of Fishery has encouraged good agriculture practices for import, for important uh, commodities such as chim and fish. The criteria include practice that the socially and environmentally responsible good agriculture practices and other standards are uh, certified by a Department of Fishery and other competent agencies. Fish, marking, fish marketing in Thailand is complex. There are many different types of market and very large uh, number of traders of different types. Fish is so fresh and as well as uh, in process form. However, to get opportunity to small scale fishery and aquaculture, Department of Fishery initiate offline online market called fisherman market or fisherman shop in our provinces with to promote and uh, intensify of the trade and market access for small scale fishery and aquaculture to the fisherman shop nationwide. For contribution to food security in terms of availability, consumption of seafood in Thailand was estimated from the household survey equal 29.5 kilograms per capita per year. In terms of efforts, uh, ability, seafood flies vary upon the species, with freshwater species being cheaper than the marine species. Compared to the other source of protein, such as chicken, the price of marine species is typically higher. Coastal communities have 
easier access to the seafood uh, more than inland uh, provinces. In terms of quality and safety, Thailand has set a criterion for food safety standard for the con contamination of some heavy metal, pesticides, chemical, and pathogenic uh, bac bacteria under the Foods Act 1979. Authority agencies such as Ministry of Public Health and Department of Fisheries has been uh, routinely monitoring the contamination level in food and related products, including seafood, in terms of income and livelihood, fisheries and aquaculture sector have generated job and income for coastal communities and farmers. Employment in the agriculture sector, including fisheries sector, was estimated to be 28% of total employment in 20, 23 coastal provinces. In 2017, there were uh, 650, 100,000 people employed and engaged in fish farm and uh, related industry. In 2022, by a circular green economy model, model or BCG model be a new uh, national agenda in Thailand regarding to the Un United Nations Sustainable Development Goals or SDG. The Royal Thai government have uh, projects and activities to support and encourage farmers, fishers under BCG model. The objective of the BCG model is in fisheries sector uh, to promote uh, fishery and aquaculture to achieve high efficiency standard and income level by applying technological innovation, indicating with the local knowledge. However, the research, logistic, and innovation under the BCG model are still needed to uh, develop a practical hand-on experience for all stakeholders in the value chain. Thailand recognized the importance of uh, sustainable use of marine resources along with maintaining sustainable ecosystem. According to through economy principle, equal and fair access to resources based on the blue justice principle of additional fishers and small scale aquaculture farming by promoting and support, supporting various projects and activities according with uh, the policy of the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative. The Department of Fishery has various projects to help fishers, such as funding technology transfer in processing trade and market access assistance and aquatic uh, animal transportation assistance, as well as promote and educating fisher and farmer on sustainable fishery practices that comply with the national regulation and laws so that uh, they can have uh, food security, sustainability management of uh, fishery resources and can driving a uh, local uh, economics that contribute to the well-being of uh, fishermen, uh, farmers, and all the related uh, fish fishery industry uh, for a possibility, possibility. So this is my um, presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Tao Guan. This is quite an elaborate of how Thailand uh, translate and then make the work that we already uh, doing on the ground in order to uh, collate to the global intention and the new term, the new target. Thailand is the leading role in combat IUU fisheries, which is their various action on the ground. And you see uh, that's a lot of implementation, need both research, development, science, technology, and innovation. It is well uh, demonstrate how blue economy contribute to the national economy. 
uh, we in Thailand usually we say that uh, for agricultural contribution to GDP is only now less than 10%, now it's only 8%. But in your slide show that blue economy from Thailand is about 22%. So this is how we in, in vis envision that for holistic view for food system, it's all interconnected if we work together from the resources to the food, to the producer, and until the waste. There's a lot of contribution, maybe almost a quarter of the GDP of the countries. And all those translation and action, I think those shows how Thailand determined to incorporate the new concept of the BCG economic models. Maybe we start with the commodity when we work in agriculture, but now to diverse commodity into the biodiversity, into sustainability and related from uh, government, uh, business, and the people. So thank you very much. This is all from policy at the international level and at the national level. I encourage the participant to put the chat, you know, if you have some questions on this uh, uh, at this time, please put in the chat box or you can raise your hand so we can give you the microphone. This forum, this dialogue is where we share experience. I know people, uh, all the virtual participants, you have your own experience, you have your own action. Please share that and we will take this up as part of this dialogue. Is there any question or anything in the chat box? Still not now. Maybe I have some questions. Maybe I direct to uh, uh, Ms. Monica, because the working group is quite separate for us. Uh, as the food, we talk about food security. And for your working group is about ocean and fisheries. How these two working group at the APEC work together and how as the two sector can work together collaboratively. So maybe you have some ex uh, experience to share or uh, comment how we work between ocean fishery and the food security. Uh, please, please, Ms. Monica. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, very, very well. Okay, perfect. <laughs> thank you very much for your question. Well, uh, as you pointed, pointed out, uh, the main focus of the Ocean and Fisheries Working Group is the sustainability of the marine environment. Uh, but uh, through uh, the, the implementation of actions and the, the, the sharing of experiences, activities developed by the economist member uh, are uh, even though I related with this particular issues have an effect on food security. Uh, you know, the sustainability of resources is a main issue for uh, the food security of uh, marine products. And um, we uh, actually, we are uh, looking uh, very closely the uh, new roadmap of food security developed by the PPFS group. And there are uh, many uh, points of collaboration, uh, many coincidences. Uh, as also I mentioned, we are working now in a new uh, roadmap on small scale fisheries and aquaculture. The, the, that has a, a main focus in um, the development of coastal communities and uh, the uh, you know, sustainability of uh, the uh, marine environments related with their particular activities. And this has very much to do with uh, the food security and the production of uh, safe uh, fishery products for uh, the people uh, in the coastal communities and around the world. So um, I think that uh, as a uh, 
the main objectives of the group is share experiences and um, you know uh, through that uh, allow the, the the different economies participants to improve their own systems both to control uh, and warranty the environmental sustainability and the production of uh, food uh, from uh, marine resources which is uh, secure and safe. So I think I, there's a lot of uh, common issues between uh, the, the, the both uh, uh, points of view. Hmm? Okay, thank you very much. I think that's how, and it's very glad to hear, you know, the two working group is already uh, trying to find some mutual uh, goals, mutual action that can be benefit uh, both sectoral, yeah? and I think those one be looking forward how the new roadmap is uh, is uh, uh, all about, and maybe I I I I take that question to Dr. Tawan too, because uh, when when uh, Miss Monigam mentioned about new roadmap about small scale fisheries, and I think that Thailand has some experience with the small scale because most of Thailand is small holders. And then, and then there's some, uh, as well, the question from, from the, our participant of how uh, Thailand have the blue economy in action. Can you elaborate about the small scale fisheries? Is that part of the blue economies? And how do you, uh, how Department of Fishery work in action toward that? activities. Dr. Tawan, please. Thank you, Dr. Wanida. Actually, uh, for food security and ocean uh, fisheries, it related, as uh, I mentioned in my slide presentation, uh, fisheries, uh, we cannot uh, separate the food security and uh, the sustainability of fisheries uh, out of it, because um, fisheries uh, products as I mentioned, if we have not uh, the sustainability in that, in, in that uh, mean, the food security is not offered. So how, how can we uh, make the food security sustainable? It's the same thing, I think. If we can uh, manage uh, the fisheries uh, sustainability, it's also uh, achieve the food security as well. So, that's why uh, Thailand, Thai, Thailand tried to have a, a policy to ensure um, our uh, production of from the marine uh, sector have to be sustainable for both sides, both sectors. Uh, first is uh, from uh, fisheries. In fisheries, we have to manage our um, ocean, actually, uh, in Thai uh, water. We have to manage it, and how how to manage it. So we have to have the uh, research, or we have to have uh, our um, uh, data. We use uh, our uh, maximum sustainable yield to manage, and we also uh, develop our uh, fishery management plan. So every agency, even the private sector, have to follow a plan. So to be sure and. We have the same uh, goal about the uh, sustainable trees uh, in our uh, nation. And another thing is uh, for uh, aquaculture, how to make it uh, sustainable. Uh, everyone and every uh, body said about uh, climate change, the factor that affect to the ocean and also its effect to the aquaculture as well. We're trying to uh, move uh, uh, capture uh, sector to uh, culture sector because if we have a culture, we can uh, control uh, everything that we uh, might have. For example, for uh, food uh, safety, uh, we can uh, do the, uh, the safety food from the uh, fishery sector. Aquaculture is one of that. So that's why we also have the standard. Uh, culture. 
And also, we trying to encourage our people. I mean, uh, for uh, not only the fish, fishermen or uh, farmer to be aware for the uh, environmental. Uh, also, everyone that uh, in uh, Thailand, uh, they have to have the mindset to how to uh, manage our environmental safely. So, because. Uh, the aquaculture have to use the water uh, from uh, uh, natural resources as well. If they have the, a contamination from uh, from uh, household or e even the industry, so if effect effect to uh, the aquaculture sector and also effect to the food that uh, uh, they can uh, have. So this is uh, my answer. Thank you. We see in agriculture, the safety is come first. And then the, not the safety of the food we produce, but the safety of the farmers, the features, as well as the safety of the resources that we use to produce food. And I think there's quite a lot in action that in aquaculture and fish tree, which, which, which uh, Department of Fishery and Policy in order to empowerment the feature and the sector to be. But I heard that there's one question about how to make it sustainable, how to make it more uh, better sustainable in the fisheries. So I think maybe those are the questions that we have the dialogue today on the science and technology. I asked both of the speakers, do you see any gaps or any uh, recommendation that or how science, technology, innovation can contribute to our sector to achieve the blue economy? Because it's not only the produce, production, but climate change, the transportation, the energy, and uh, various new uh, challenge and new products, new services from the blue sector. I I I give the who who will go first? <laughs> yeah, how STI can be part of the the road to sustainability in blue economies? Yeah. Uh, Doctor Tawon. Okay, maybe I first. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, research and um, innovation are very important now because we, we, in some cases, we need uh, uh, innovation to uh, rise the, uh, how to say, uh, to uh, develop, develop what? Develop the, the means and uh, how can we uh, use that innovation to uh, to use with the uh, aquaculture or even the fishery sector to sustainable. For example, um, we trying to use the IoT, Internet of Things, for uh, our aquaculture in a uh, um, chim farm. So if we can use that, we we can uh, even uh, lower the lower the cost the cost uh, uh, to uh, produce the chimp farm, and also now we face uh, the labor issue in fishery sector. So we have to have the uh, innovation to to the um, fishery sector. And also the the high value or high value added or a high value creation in a BCG model is needed because if we uh, sell just only the fresh fish, the 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 price of the fish is uh, very low. But if we have the process fish of processing uh, food is higher uh, value. And if we have the higher innovation uh, to 
set and give the higher value uh, than uh, we have, it might uh, have the higher uh, income to our sector or even in the uh, fishery sector. So this is uh, might be the uh, standard sustainable uh, for the uh, both aquaculture or fishery sector. So the innovation and so research have to be the most uh, important now for Thailand. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Monica, you have any suggestions how SCI get involved of our implementation of the action plan? Yes, actually, I agree with most of what uh, was said by uh, my colleague speaker. Um, I think that science, technology, and innovation are crucial for, um, you know, the entire sustainability of oceans and fisheries and aquaculture production. Um, through this uh, implementations uh, and developments, uh, we might improve uh, the production systems in aquaculture, make them more efficient, also improve the efficiency in the use of the resources from fisheries through a more efficient productive or processing systems. Uh, I, some other ideas maybe also diminish the impact of uh, residues uh, through um, uh, the Im uh, implementation of uh, different uh, approaches of circular uh, economy to reuse or reduce, you know, the the um, losses. Hmm? Um, all the development of technologies uh, for uh, the processing also contributes to diminish uh, the loss and waste of food, and contributes to food uh, security and uh, the production of uh, better products and uh, more value products, of course, improve the livelihoods of the um, fisher and aquaculture producers. So there's, there's a very important issue there and how we can mo make more efficient both the production and the processing and the reusing uh, the uh, you know residues uh, and all this is is uh, very very related with the advances we can uh, approach through science technology and innovation so it's a crucial I uh, issue in this uh, particular matter oh, thank, thank you, you very much i think that that's very echo how the sector the two sector uh, see science, technology, and innovation. And today we we have the dialogue under the uh, APEC science, technology, <laughs> part policy partnership. And I think that's the vocal how we use our science, our knowledge, our technology to make the innovation for sustainable sustainability. I'm not quite sure is there any comments or open the floor for our virtual participant if you have something to share. Today is the dialogue, it's not to find any consensus, but to, to share the idea, to share the action, to share your experience, or even the question, do you know about blue economy? Do you know is this relevant to you? So I think uh, the chat box is still open. We can revisit. And if there are no other uh, comment on this session, I would like to, I cannot conclude. I just maybe take stock, take stock of what we have been uh, a chit chat. I call it chit chat, it's not a discussion. But we can see that from uh, Ms. Monica. In the international fora, especially from the government side, be a member of the global uh, arena, regional arena, especially the APEC that we working now. The government has addressed this long time ago, blue economy since 2014. And there's a lot of work under the ocean and fisheries working group 
to uh, describe how we move forward for the all economy in these two economies. And this year, one of the deliverables is about the action plan, how to move forward and then achieve the SDG by 2030. And those are busy, busy, busy working. And one thing is that the work uh, across the uh, working group, they already discussed how the sustainability in the ocean, the blue economy and food security can have a common ground to address the other uh, issue. And from the policy partnership of food security, this year we will have the action plan that will implement the roadmap that already agreed. So it seems that APEC Economy Working Group aligned with the decades of actions of the sustainable development goals that we go toward as a commit commitment of the world. And Thailand is the example of how to interpret to in, in action, incorporate what is already done in the agriculture, agriculture sectors, look at the feature, look at the efficiency of the production. And those two distinguished uh, speakers highlight the importance of the science, technology, and innovation, not only increase the efficiency, but also increase at how we deliver services, the product to the people, to the future, to, in order to sustainable use of the resource and make sure environment and the resource that we use can be at the optimum and maximum the utilization. And there's something to take back how the BCG concept can use the side technology in a greater and more outreach. So those are, I take stock from those two speakers and would like to share. And I, I, we get some more questions. So I hope that the two speakers will have, still have time for us. Um, there's another question. Uh, if some countries cannot reach out for technological innovation, what do you suggest for such countries to create a value added of their fisheries products? So those are the questions from our virtual uh, participant. I think maybe you can we we can share the thought of this question. Maybe I don't know if we have to answer or not or. This is the, the two activities that we have to sit down and think together. Um, speaker, please. Maybe Kun Monica. Kun Monica, maybe you address this. Thank you very much. Well, uh, of course, uh, it's a problem the access to technology for some mm -hmm. economies. We are well aware of that. And uh, for that, uh, I think that, uh, as, as I mentioned in my presentation, I think that, that the great value of the uh, work we uh, develop uh, in the working groups inside the EPEC forum mm -hmm. uh, are related to uh, the opportunity to share and know experiences of others uh, and look how uh, they uh, the other countries have managed the same you know uh, difficulties and also challenges to improve their um, productive systems um, i think that that, that really is a, a unique opportunity uh, apec gives all the uh, you know tools to uh, organize and uh, carry on with initiatives that uh, actually help very much to um, uh, the knowledge the capacity building and the implementation of better practices in the ocean and fisheries recently, uh, a particular um, work has been uh, finished uh, related with the um, reuse of waste pro uh, pro uh, produced by uh, 
fisheries activities in the small scale fisheries and was a very interesting experience because uh, some uh, economies uh, shared uh, how manage in a very small scale uh, how to manage uh, you know the wastes and how to uh, both uh, improve their you know earnings using this waste in a productive manner and also diminish the contamination and contribute in that way to the sustainability of the environment. So I think that this uh, fora gives this opportunity to, to know better, to uh, share experiences and build capacities uh, with uh, uh, that can be, you know, adapted to uh, the different realities. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Taiwan, you have something to add on? Yeah, uh, thank you. Actually, I agree with uh, Monica. <coughs> sharing, sharing experience is uh, very important for, for this issue. Uh, actually, uh, for innovation and development of technology, uh, there are different, different uh, levels and different uh, uh, level in each country they are not the same level uh, but uh, if uh, the country that have higher innovation or knowledge uh, they can uh, uh, share their experience to another country so another country can use that uh, to uh, to achieve that um, uh, the goals uh, easier for example uh, Thailand faced the IEU um, uh, problems uh, in the former time, and uh, we have the experiences from that. So we try to share our experience uh, in uh, every level. For example, in our neighboring country, for ASEAN country, we try to get together and try to cooperate together. Uh, if we can have the cooperation, we can share information of that, we can solve the problem together. So this is our our uh, our thought, and um, another thing is uh, if uh, the uh, agency, for example, FAO, uh, they can have uh, um, the knowledge or they have the um, innovation, they can also have the project. So uh, the country can ask this. Uh, uh, problem to to them so they can have a um, so I think that one um, from the speaker is that uh, the um, knowledge or innovation they have the process who have the capacity to invest who create the knowledge so you you are capable of doing that but just like the APEC economies that we working every year, try to make prosperity and sustainability of the, the region. It's just like today, the chair, who know what. So we share what we know. We share our challenges. We share our success and we share some opportunity in the future together. So I think one thing maybe from the two speaker is that how this mechanism or how these activities will be continue in the direction that we how to share the knowledge where we can find it and as i heard that thailand is ready to share our experience uh the examples like the iuu we we go through um, thailand go through ups and downs so we can share how we uh, how we uh, rise above the water and grab some air, and those are Thailand is ready to all various international and maybe the technical uh, uh, UN organizations such such like FAO or other various that uh, have the project have some investment or some uh, funding. Those can be think of how this kind of knowledge can be shared and not only among government, but publicly or who willing to be part of the sustainability. 
Is there any more questions or comment? So I think we we take some time, you know, and a very uh, thankful from the both speakers because uh, I have to share with all the audience that uh, once we reach out to these two distinguished speaker, we say yes, even they still don't know what it's all about, but you can say that with the experience and uh, action oriented, they're ready to share what they are working on and the knowledge it is. And I think this session has shown that we have the policy, we have the roadmap, we have some action on the ground in various other epic economy to move forward so, uh, from the blue economy as part of the sustainable food system. Science technology is very crucial. How we share the knowledge and make the knowledge practical, efficient, and ready and affordable for all actors in the sector. Maybe those are the next step that APEC has to work in order to achieve the balance of the theme of APEC 2022. And if uh, I'm on this behalf of the virtual uh, participant, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Monica and Dr. Tawan for your readiness and your willingness and your insightful and very informative information that we can take it up and think about it more. Maybe the future collaboration and activities can rise from this dialogue. Thank you very much. And the session, I think, is closed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Monica. I know the time different. Very appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And good night to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. And I still encourage all the virtual participants to keep posting on chat, you know. Not, nothing's wrong. Every comment is right. Every question is right. We try to find answer. Not today, but tomorrow we will do that. So I think it's excellent. I have to congratulate everybody here. At the dialogue, we finished the first session on the sustainable, uh, sustainable blue economy, focus on the policy. The next session is about the case study of innovative technology and best practices in blue economies. But as we had some difficulty in the technology at the beginning, I, may, I would like to take all of you to the session of welcome remarks from our uh, host agency that are uh, helping us to have this uh, dialogue. So I turn to the MC to the welcome remarks. We have the first one, Mr. Somchuan Ratanam Mankalanon, uh, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture Cooperatives to deliver his Welcome remarks. Dr. Nalong Siri, third one of the presidents of NAFTA, distinguished EPEC economies, distinguished online participants, and the co host of today's event on behalf of Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives. I am deeply honored to take part in Asia and the Pacific Regional Dialogue on Science and Technology for a Sustainable Food System being held virtually. And I would like to thank all participants here for organizing this inclusive dialogue as part of how the APEC can be balanced through the BCG biocircular and green economic model. As we gear toward accelerating the achievement of SDG targets. It is clear that we will need to focus on global food systems transformation. We need to establish more intensive dialogue 
and develop mutually beneficial collaboration among food actors across the world food systems. Today, we highlight two cross-cutting issues which need attention and understanding from all sectors, namely rural economy and food loss and waste in order to achieve open, connect and balance from our APEC economies. While food systems are struggling to feed an ever-growing population, high amounts of food are wasted and lost every year throughout the value chains, as well as the loss of biodiversity, the need for healthy diets and food security, our life underwater and the ecosystems can be the sustainable rural economy. From the dialogue by the UN Food System Summit 2021, which our national and international partners and alliance, we need science and technology to identify the knowledge and science based on tools to implement, measure and monitor progress towards SDGs. In order to achieve balanced economic, social and environmental sustainability, how we can collaborate and coordinate a multidisciplinary approach for sustainable food systems. Therefore, let us explore ways and means across the sectoral working group of the APEC, PPFS, OFWG, PPSCI, to create a crucial ecosystem in order to foster comprehensive transformation of APEC food systems. We are committed to be part of the open connect plan of our APEC economies. Thank you. Thank you, His Excellency. The next welcome remarks. Mr. Speaker. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of National Science and Technology Development Agency, or NASA, I would like to welcome you all to Asia and the Pacific Regional Dialogue on Science and Technology for a Sustainable Food System, Session 3, concerning actions towards more sustainable food system. It is an honor for NASDA to co-organize this extraordinary event with the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives. I also appreciate seeing many of you who have joined this event from a great distance. Since the launch of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in the year 2015, our world has been disrupted by global crisis that affect our sustainable livelihood. The emerging issues on the food system and the ability to access nutrition food, such as a healthy diet, climate change, food loss and waste, biodiversity loss, and nature-based solutions become major concerns and less global awareness of food system transformation. As the host of APEC 2022, Thailand has set out to deliver the implementation plan of food security roadmap towards 2030 on a food security declaration while adopting the bio, circular, green economy national agenda of DCG for inclusive and sustainable growth. To comply with this national guideline, NASDA has ramped up our research effort in agriculture and food. Therefore, we appreciate an opportunity to participate in this fruitful webinar on sustainable food systems to put our policies into practice. This event is the third iteration of webinar series under the Asia and the Pacific Regional Dialogue on Science and Technology for Sustainable Food System that addresses the STI implementation to achieve sustainable food systems. 
This session will focus on addressing common challenges of food security and climate change regarding food loss and food waste and the sustainable blue economy and identifying opportunity for APEC member economies and their partners around the world. Consequently, conclusions and recommendations reached in this session will be presented at the APEC Take Two Business, which will be held in Bangkok during the 10 to 12 of October 2022. I do hope that all participants will have a better understanding of food loss and food waste and sustainable blue economy in APEC based on several case studies presented, including multiple stakeholder and cross-country collaborations mechanism. The information and knowledge generated today will bring about good operational guidelines for all of us to build a sustainable food system and achieve the SDG through STI collaboration to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition by 2030. I wish this event great success. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much from the uh, two welcome remarks from two ministry, Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives and the Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation. As it is mentioned, this is the session three, the series dialogue under the Asia and the Pacific Regional Dialogue on Science Technology. This, this theme of, of this session is about actions towards more sustainable food system. And the, the next session under the sustainable blue economies, we have a privilege and honor to have our uh, speakers from business sector, from industry, to share with us the case study, the knowledge regarding the innovative technology and best practices regarding the blue economy. The session before us, we talk as the government, how we see it, the process to have policy roadmap, whatever. But this time, we very honored to have uh, Mr. Brad Good Pairo. He's the Director of Sustainability, Asia and Human Rights Manager of the Thai Union Group, PCL, a global seafood leader with the ambitious growth goals and a dedication to sustainability and innovation. He works toward the goals to eliminate labor rights, views, and unethical labor practices in a Thai Union operations and the supply chain, as well as manage and oversee uh, TU activities initiatives related to the broader sustainable sustainability in Asia. Currently, he represents Thai Union in multi stakeholder initiatives such as the UN Global Compact Network Thailand and the Seafood Task Force. He got his bachelor degree in economics from. University of Chicago and the Public Administration in Interna International Development from Harvard Kennedy School of Government. We very honored to have you to chair what is what the business as the international and national uh, leading uh, business uh, operation. How do you see the blue economy and how your work, your action on the ground in order to implement this policy and concept in action. So no further ado, may I invite Kun Prat, if you're ready to share your presentation. Thank you so much uh, for kind introduction uh, and inviting me, um, Dr. Vadida, and hello everyone. So um, I'm gonna share my presentation quickly. So Please. Just give me a moment. Yeah. Thank you so much to participate in this dialogue. Yes. 
Can um, can everyone see my screen? No, still, still not. You can allow to share. Ha, young, young. We still not see your presentation. Can you try to share presentation again? Okay, it's coming. Yes, we can see it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Again, yes. hello everyone. So today I would like to shortly present about um, Thai Union sustainability strategy, especially um, as it relates to blue economy and technologies. Um, so if you're not aware, Thai Union, uh, we are based in Thailand. We have been um, in seafood business for um, almost uh, for about for, for more than 40 years. So we started in Thailand and start to expand organically and also through acquisition. So we one of the largest um, business um, seafood business in the world. Um, and one of the key um, corporate strategy pillar is sustainability. The other one being innovation. We have started um, to create um, sustainable development strategy under the name Sea Change, as you can see on the slide here, really to support our corporate goal of the vision of having um, ensure healthy living and healthy oceans at the same time. So it's uh, agenda for both people and environmental resources like the ocean. Uh, since the introduction of um, this sustainability strategy in 2016, um, the strategy has three key objectives. First of all, as we are in the seafood business, we have to rely on a lot of raw materials and resource from the oceans. So having sustainable seas for now and future generation is very critically important to Thai Union. Um, secondly, the people that are involved in our operation and supply chain, whether those, you know, working in our own processing factories in Thailand and beyond, but also workers who work in our supply chain, whether those are on fishing vessels or on farms that we source from. So um, this pillar, it's really about labor rights. We want to ensure that all the workers in our operation of supply chain are safe, they are legally employed and empowered. So we don't want labor rights abuse, we don't want child labor, human trafficking, or any forms of uh, forced labor or any forms of labor abuses in operation and supply chain. And thirdly, very important to the agenda today, it's about combating climate change and promoting healthy diets. We know that sustainable seafood, it's really good in terms of nutrition for, for human um, health. Um, at the same time, if you look at uh, things like carbon and environmental footprint of, of um, seafood, right? Um, in comparison, let's say with land-based meat, um, you found that um, carbon footprint of, of seafood generally is lower um, than, than land-based. Um, you know, land-based meat. So, um, but at the same time, even though there is low carbon footprint um, seafood in general, we know that there are rooms to improve um, in terms of further lower the carbon footprint and environmental footprint of, of the seafood. Um, so, um, and I'm gonna expand a bit on this in, in the uh, examples um, later on. So the three pillars are triggered into four um, for um, concrete programs, um, one here in the right hand side, it's 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 um, safe and legal labor. So again, this is about people, uh, responsible sourcing because we do not own fishing vessels and we do not own farms. We have to work very closely with our suppliers and partners to ensure there is traceability. So we know you know, which farms or which vessels we are sourcing from. Um, and also ensure that the suppliers um, um, really adhere to international standards or they have to improve themselves to meet international standards. For example, in the marine um, wild catch, right, um, there is a standard on Marine Stewardship Council, MSC, 
um, in the farms context of farms, there are international standards like BAP or ASC, etc. The third pillar, responsible operations. This is the scope of our own processing factories. We have to make sure that our processing facilities um, must be environmental responsible um, and also caring for the workers in terms of lowering, uh, minimizing accident and injury to the workers. Um, the fourth pillar is people and communities. This is about CSR, taking care of um, people who live or work in the regions where we have factories or source from. Um, Thai Union through the Sea Chain Sustainability Strategy contributes to so many UN Sustainable Development Goals. There are 17 of them, as you know, but um, we decided that we will focus on four concrete goals where we see that are most relevant and where we can have most impact. That is goal number two on zero hunger, goal number eight on decent work and economic growth, 13 on climate action, and 14, of course, on life below water. Um, some of the examples that um, you know, we, we advance in terms of blue economy, um, on the left-hand side, we recently become a partner of Sustainable Fisheries Partnership, um, SFP, which is a nonprofit based in the US um, dedicated to marine ecosystem and seafood supply. Um, so one of the things that we are doing with them this year is we'll make sure that um, we have a complete independent third party risk assessment um, of our seafood portfolio. So you know the level of IUU risk, right? Um, even by country, by fishing vessel flag, and so on. Human right risk, um, also things like by catch risk, right? The risk of um, the the fishery that we we source from might be involved in some risk related to by catch of marine mammals, for example. So that um, later on we're gonna do uh, work with them to do things like by catch audit. Right, auditing suppliers whether they have good policy in place to manage the impact on endangered, threatened, and protected uh, species um, as well. Um, so that's one example of recent partnership to to advance blue economy. On the second hand side, it's a pilot related to aquaculture in Thailand. So we work with uh, our technology partners to begin piloting the use of satellite imaging. Um, you know, to 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 really look use satellite to look at other stream farming operations in our supply chain. It's um to look at you know whether it it can detect risk, um whether it can monitor certain sustainability performance. You know, instead of going to engage with farmers directly or talk to farmers, we can think about using technologies to to monitor this um you know at scale. Um. One interesting application of technology for blue economy here is um, um, about last year, we uh, announced a new partnership with uh, NGO called the Nature Conservancy, um, which is really global environmental nonprofit um, that has program on conservation in at least 79 countries around the world. So we announced a partnership with them um, on to advance sustainability, uh, mostly of um, um, blue economy. Um, so related to our white catch portfolio, um, particularly a lot of white catch um, bean tuna. Um, so many things on things like fishery improvement project here to to ensure that the fisheries resource from can advance to meet. Um, um, international standards like Marine Stewardship Council, but um, the important elements that's relevant to technologies is electronic monitoring at sea. So some of the um, some of the regulators, regional regulators of fisheries around the world do require um, some form of um, having a human observer on board fishing vessels or installation of electronic monitoring at sea on board vessels. And really these EM tools, you know, consists of things like video camera, um, VMS, um, you know, video camera uh, control center. It really, the roles of these technologies is to monitor what happened on board. 
when it's really far out at sea. And I know that um, the, the DOF also has this program in place, particularly for, uh, for Thai, you know, Thai vessels um, that, that are, um, that are um, fishing out of, of Thai water. So, you know, in setting up us right, um, to do audits or, or to talk to suppliers, we can rely on these technologies to monitor, monitor to see, you know, what, what might go wrong whether fishers are engaged in IUU fisheries, um, whether they, yeah, they might have human rights abuses and so on. Um, food loss and waste, um, really, you know, we, we source a lot of seafood and we want to make sure that we use all parts of seafood um, to the maximum value. Um, in tuna, we use almost 100% part of tuna. Um, so some of the meat, uh, the white meat, go to human consumption. They go into can for human food, like in our brand Select. Some of the red meat um, can become a really nutritious pet food. Um, some can turn into aquaculture um, 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 or livestock feed. Right? Um, the bone, we recently can extract calcium, um, calcium, natural calcium from the tuna bone. Um, the tuna head, some part of it, we can, um, you know, extract um, rich oil um, and we further refine um, for, for further human consumptions. So we try to use all parts of the, the tuna and the same also apply for um, the shrimp, which is another uh, species that we source from. Um, complementing areas of blue economy work, it's blue finance program that we have in place. Um, so, essentially, um, we work with uh, partner financial institutions and third party evaluator um, to, to issue um, the blue loan and blue bonds. Um, essentially, uh, the, the blue loans and blue bonds, um, we Thai Union would get lower interest rate um, as a reward for meeting KPIs related to sustainability. Right. Um, so in the past, we worked with, with Thai um, and Japanese financial institutions on these bonds and loans. And the KPIs are related to our ranking on Dow Jones Sustainability Index, which is one of the sustainability assessment index. Right. So this index looks at you know, the E, the S and G part of all sustainability, including um, our work on blue economy. Um, goal number two, KPI number two, it's related to climate change. So we have to meet ambitious goal in terms of reducing carbon footprint um, um, from, from our own operations. Um, and third, on the water monitoring, um, I mentioned a few slides ago that we have worked with TNC, the Nature Conservancy, to install um, electronic monitoring um, on, on the boats that we source from. So the goals, the KPIs on the water monitor, uh, water monitoring um, is tied to percentage of vessels um, with human observer or electronic monitoring for transparency. Um, now coming back a bit uh, to technologies in Thailand, um, as you know, we, we source a lot from, from Thai shrimp farmers. Um, we also, um, Few years ago, we invest. Uh, we we through our corporate venture fund, we made an investment investment in a startup called Hydroneo, and they operate smart um, aquaculture um, programs. So smart farm technologies to really help farmers, um, you know, save their own costs in terms of the electricity bills, but also help them lower greenhouse gas uh, reduction associated with less energy use. Um, so we trial uh, that technology, we, well, we invest in Hydroneo, but we also trial Hydroneo um, in our own farms and also farms, um, supplies farm that we source from. You know, one study um, which we published in our sustainability report found that, you know, um, together with Hydroneo smart farm system, um, plus installation of um, solar power in the farm can lead to estimate greenhouse gas reduction of 30.4 tons um, um, CO2 equivalent per year. And it also save farmers some money in terms of electricity bills. Um, 
I talk a lot about technologies and environmental sustainability for blue economy, but uh, people are important too, right? Uh, we want to support fishers and fishing boat um, workers, whether Thai or migrants, um, on their labor rights and health and safety training. Um, so photo here is an example of the training that we have done with NGO partner, ITF. Um, so these, you know, program, um, we go to ports where our supplies operate and train their crews on health and safety and also Thai um, labor law and labor rights according to the Thai law. Um, exam our last example here is we pilot comic contracts for fishers in Thailand. So you know that um, a lot of fishing um, crews are Thai and migrants, and migrants are sometimes illiterate, or sometimes the, the employment contract are provided only in Thai language. So we work with a partner to create a contract that is in a comic form, right? So these include a lot of visuals and image to explain terms and condition on contracts, such as working hours, health and safety condition, grievance mechanism, right? Um, their salary and so on, so that workers can understand their legal rights and their rights according to, to their employment contract. So um, we obviously, we, we, we come along and we, we invest a lot in blue economy um, throughout the five, six years. Um, and you know, we, we receive external recognitions. We are the top performer in the food products industry in the Dan Jones Sustainability Index. On the right hand side, we have Seafood Stewardship Index, which assess 30 most influential companies in the seafood industry around the world, looking at how much these companies contribute to UN Sustainable Development Goals. And we came up ranking number one for two consecutive years. So with that, I would like to conclude uh, my, my presentation here, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Brad. I think this is quite a uh, uh, chair with us, how business uh, are doing, and then how you uh, see the blue economy in action, I have to say in action, because there are a lot of uh, activities, the, the results from the work, which is can be used as the case study and lesson learned for other. And you show that how a Thai Union is a multinational company. So you address to ensure the compliance of regulation with the various countries, the consumer demands and transparency of how uh, doing business I think, and you show many technology at work, you know, and it's very fascinating how all the technology in various uh, uh, area that can be in use from satellite to the comic, <laughs> comic communication. I think those one is how a knowledge and uh, at use. And one thing is about activities that um, you can see that if we understand the goals where we want to go, we can select the right uh, technology, the right action, and can implement it and can show to the many awards and recognition that this is how the way the business go toward uh, sustainable uh, development goals. And we closer, closer to 2030, and then there may be something we can revisit at, uh, at the second time, uh, how we address the constraints. And thank you very much for this section. Another, uh, another honorable speaker is from Indonesia. He's, uh, uh, if I pronounce uh, wrongly, my apologies, uh, Yoman Bediata. He's the chairman of the Agency of Marine and Fisheries Research and Human Resources at, uh, in uh, Jakarta, Republic of Indonesia. His training and his experience always with the fisheries, conservation, aquaculture, 
and really in the blue economy. And he has many, many awards and grants, the research grants from Delineation Coral Leaf, the scholarship from ADB, uh, and uh, the grant to many presentation. And I think we very honored to have you to share how Indonesia implement and use the innovative uh, technology and best practices in the blue economy of Republic of Indonesia. Dr. Radiata, if you're ready, yeah, you can, ready. yes, you can share your presentation. Yeah. Yes, please. Very honor and good morning to you from Bangkok. Thank you, Miss. Thank you for, for that time. Uh, very good morning to all of us. So I would like to thank to the Asia and Pacific Regional Dialogue on Science and Technology for sustainable food system since the towards a more sustainable food system that giving us opportunity to share our uh, best practices on the implementation of the blue economy in, in uh, Indonesia. So the title of my talk this morning is the uh, Smart Fishing Spirits, Innovative Technologies and Best Practices to Implement the Blue Economy. My name is Nyoman Radiata. I'm a chairman of Agency for Marine and Fisheries Research and Human Resource Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries. As we know, the Indonesia is the archipelago uh, country. We are having 70,500 islands with an area of Indonesia ocean about 6.8 million square kilometer with the coastline land about 180,000 kilometer, which is 275.77 million people. And most of them live in the coastal area. A state control of Indonesia Ocean need to balance ecological and economic sustainability. According to Indonesia Constitution Chapter 33, our water and the natural resources contained therein are controlled by the state and use the greatest prosperity of the people. So this has become our uh, strategy for that uh, uh, basic philosophy for implementation of blue economy in our uh, minister of our national level. So in order to implement that uh, a blue economy, we have a challenging including degradation of marine biota diversity due to human activity, a decrease in fish stock due to overfishing and IVU fishing, increased need for protein, uh, protein production due to population exploitation, meeting the need of the export and domestic market utilization of marine spicia and small islands that are not in accordance with the rule. So based on that challenge, we need to formulate our policy responses, including expanding the conservation area with the target of 30% of the marine area of the Republic of Indonesia, measure fishing based on quota and fishing zone, development of marine coastal freshwater or inland aquaculture, management of, management of marine debris with the economic value strategy, as well as structuring, structuring the use of marine, coastal, and small island spatial. So through these policy responses, so we could have an impact on the high carbon value and increasing fish stock in each measuring fishing zone, the economic growth in every Measuring fishing zone, fishermen proper fish stock are maintained. Reduce fishing activity at sea to maintain fish population, increase uh, fisheries production for export domestic market, and also reduce marine debris by 2030 up to 70%, protecting the coastal and small island from being damaged by economic activities. So to formulate that all challenge policy responses and impact, our Minister of Marine Affairs and Fisheries already have a five a priority program in order to implementation of our blue economy. First is water-based capture fisheries. 
development of marine, coastal, and land aquaculture, sustainable utilization of marine, coastal, and small island spatia, extending the conservation area up to 30% of the Indonesian water, and a management of marine debris with economic value strategy. From now on, I will concern uh, my talk more on development of uh, aquaculture, especially on inland aquaculture. So this year, our minister already decided about 130 locations of aquaculture villages, which is including 65 land aquaculture villages, 25 coastal aquaculture villages and 40 marine aquaculture villages. That villages with the type of village depend on the species actually. For example, uh, Nila villages, grouper villages, and so on. As uh, we can see together in this slide, this is the distribution of that uh, 130 villages that developed by our Minister of Marine Affairs and Fisheries this year in 2022. So more enhancement on that development of uh, aquaculture villages based on the potential we have from the implementation of education system, a training and also fisheries extension, as well as a business incubation. So we develop our program, namely smart fisheries fillets. So from this smart fisheries fillets, hopefully can uh, contribute to economic growth and also giving chance for working community as well as a sustainability environmental become our concern. And more importantly, on the digital base for development of a smart fishery spirit. So this smart fishery spirit is the in line with our blue economic program priority implementation. So smart fishery spirit, smart mean that's a combination of five more. S stand for sustainability, mean the build, for example, a build wastewater in uh, treatment installation, carry out environmental conservation and protection using registered aquaculture theory and drug. And stand for modernization, mean that modernization of fisheries facility and infrastructure, perform computational administration, the digitalization system, a marketing breakout, and doing a simple research to support the development of smart aquaculture itself. A means the acceleration, identifying problem and alternative solution in the pre-production, production and post-production of aquaculture activity. R means the regeneration, so that's a growth of new farmer. Develop a new group for that farmer of aquaculture activity. And finally, C means the technology. This is the very important point uh, related with smart aquaculture or smart uh, fishery spirits. Utilization of digital application in technical and management aspect. In develop our smart fishery spirits, of course, we are seeking collaboration among all the stakeholders from the government, official, the local governments, a startup company, a private company, telecommunication company, as well as the a private company. So so far, as illustrated in this slide, we have about nine collaborators in order to develop our case study of smart fisheries fields. This is the is the distribution. This year, 2022, a smart fishery spirit that we will build. One, a pilot project that already implemented, located in the central Java of Indonesia. So this smart fishery spirit located in Panubangan uh, villages, Banyumas, uh, central Java. So the activity in the, uh, when we see on the potential of that, Smart fisheries field in Panimbangan, we can see that uh, this area has a rice field about 132 hectares. 
an area for fisheries is about a 30 hectare, which is a, a, a baby combined with the fish about 25 hectare and freshwater aquaculture about 5 hectare. Number of fish born about 514 units and the number of pork order about 300. So, uh, 13 persons. So, from that uh, figure, so we try to develop our uh, smart fisheries field based on cluster, a uh, cluster for rice fields, farm, or winter paddy. While uh, using that uh, cluster for rice fish farm will be in improvement the technique for fish farming at rice field. And also, cluster for ornamental fish. Which is the uh, zebra ornamental fish will be cultured uh, around that uh, uh, plenty field. For example, koi, rana, goldfish, a uh, common, or uh, and other uh, freshwater ornamental fish. In order to enhance the capability of human resource, we also doing the training activity surrounding the uh, the villages. This is the, the activity, for example, we have a training on a processing fish product. So it means we consider not only pre-processing, processing, but also post-processing. So that's why we are doing that uh, a training on a process a fish product. And also we build our fisheries cooperative unit. This uh, cooperative unit was established in 23rd of February this year. So with a uh, name of a uh, cooperative unit, Minas Satya Panembangan, with the member about six, 65 uh, members. On the other hand, in order to support the financial, we also collaborate with a financial company. That's a bank, a national bank uh, company that's already uh, what interest to work together with us in that uh, smart fisheries village uh, case study. And more importantly, we together with the telecommunication a company to build the digitalization of fisheries ecosystem. So starting from a pre-processing, a processing, and post-processing digitalization system. So this means that all the activity should be what transforming to the digital system that make more efficient, more measurable activity. I think that's the what the best practical or best practices regarding the smart research field implementation in Indonesia in, in Indonesia. Inclusion smart research field is the best on how to implement blue economy using technology where the activity of training of business extension the economic the working community sustain the environmental and apply the digital technology. And lastly, the success smart business that is a stakeholder collaboration for Mr. Global Government, private state of the company, startup and I think that's all I would like to say for this excellent dialogue. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Radiata. It's very excellent that how Indonesia uh, uh, case study of using innovative technology. We heard of, a lot about smart, smart agriculture, smart fisheries, smart city, very smart, smart. And I think it's very well described how fisheries in Indonesia describe SMART as the goals in order to have all the partners in implementing and helping the village, a feature village, fishery village to be a smart fishery village. And that's very excellent how uh, uh, government policy address the the constraint and uh, let, you know, and, and uh, join hand with the villager and all the partners in order to go toward the blue economy, sustainable blue economy. Thank you very much.
I believe there's some uh, question from the floor. Question you like. Uh, regarding the, maybe the, the question is the direct to Thai Union. Um, the question is about with the global situation causing the price of imported feed increase, are there any approach that the Thai Union take to ensure sustainability of the fish production? So maybe those are uh, toward the Thai Union, but if later on Indonesia would like to share that, I welcome the speaker and other. Uh, uh, Mr. Pratt, you, will you have some response to that or any share um, information? Talking so about sustainable fishery, sustainable fishery, right? Okay. Yeah, okay, so I think through the sustainability CCN um, strategy, we have, you know, start to look at, um, well, we, we have worked on sustainable sourcing, right? Sustainable sourcing of seafood, whether um, work with suppliers, um, through fishery improvement programs, or um, to, for, to help them meet MSC standards or also source from MSC directly. Um, apart from that, um, you know, we, we advocate for change as well, right? Uh, for example, through, um, you know, um, CBOS, which is an industry group. Um, it's um, seafood um, stewardship, um, stewardship for ocean, seafood business for ocean stewardship, which comprise you know, us and also really large seafood around the world. Uh, we recently, um, you know, advocate, for example, for the WTO to remove, um, you know, harmful subsidies, for example. Um, or sometimes we work with regional fishery management organization. We advocate to the RFMO, you know, on, on better um, governings um, of fisheries um, because while you know we we are private sector but we also want to advocate for regulatory change for the better um so that's what um you know we focus a lot of effort so far but we know that there are things that we can do more for sustainable fisheries so right now um thai union is working to um, finalize our 2030 strategy um so looking at uh not just what we have achieved um, through the first phase of sea change, but also what we can do more, um, you know, um, on ocean stewardship. So things like um, addressing the climate change, right? I think that's uh, one thing that we would um, look to work on. Uh, marine biodiversity, that's uh, another, um, you know, potential direction that we can do more on. But things like um, um, ocean restorations um, um, and uh, habitat regenerations. Um, so that's uh, my answer in a nutshell. Okay, I think that's how the Thai Union chair with the question raised from the floor. Is there any other comments? I open up who would like to chair the floor. Please raise your hand and I will and we will uh, activate the microphone. Yeah. Or in, in this term, uh, I would like to get some response from uh, Indonesia. Mr. Radiata, do you have uh, any thought regarding that questions or for the sustainability? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I have to see the question. <laughs> okay. Maybe they address that it's a for the feed price, you know. We facing the increased price, not only food but the feed. And then we need that for fisheries. Is there anything you uh have some thought about that? Will it affect the sustainability? Will it have impact of the activities that yeah, you promoted. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think that's, uh, I will well, respond based on my talk on that uh, smart fisheries villages because 
for developing of that smart fishery village, we are will develop as I said that from pre-processing, pre-process, process, and a post-process. That we consider all that the process. So by by inputting the technology, by thinking of that sustainability of environmental also, so that our our uh, concern on development of that smart fisheries village. So using the recent technology, recent uh, new technology to input uh, to enhance the activity of that uh, what aquaculture activity in that smart fisheries village, so that we can monitor how that's uh, an effect, for example, effect for the feed to the environment, effect for the what the uh, activity to the environment. So that will be monitored by a, a digital technology. So we can control all that uh, the, the process of that aquaculture. So I mean that's uh, that's the, the, the way uh, one one way we implement for uh, smart aquaculture villages. I think that's that I comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I think that smart uh, when we utilize the smart technology or the innovative, if we can uh, measure uh, what we're looking for, we can monitor the progress and identify any improvement in the process of the food system or the uh, the whole value chain. So I think that that may be how Smart Features Village Indonesia share with us can uh, address the use. Uh, I'm looking at the time, we almost at noon. So maybe I give another round from the speaker. Is there any gaps or anything that you're looking at what the side technology can address the future work or what is the constraint in, 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 in your uh, operations? Is there any uh, feedback or share to the side technology? Please, please, yeah. Mr. Radiata, you can have the floor, yeah? Yeah, yeah I think that's, uh, uh, as I said, that's uh, to do the blue economy practices, uh, like uh, the small uh, best practices on the uh, smart fishery village. That smart fishery village, the collaboration is the key, key factor to implement that. So mm -hmm. our, our Governments, we are not working alone. So we yes. have to uh, collaborate all the uh, sector, all the partners, all the stakeholders, from the local stakeholder up to the national stakeholder, from the government, a private, and also the, uh, the, the, the company. So it means that uh, this becomes the issue if we work just alone. So I think that uh, the achievement is not uh, as we were actually, so that's why the, our, our strategy, how we can uh, work together. Usually, we have the, the almost similar program, but different names. So <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We'd like to what, incorporate all that similar program, even um, with different names with other, other partners. So yes. but, uh, uh, what, uh, work together. We are running together that program. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pratt. Any final thought or final uh, recommendations? <laughs> yeah, so I think to answer your questions, Dr. Vanita, I think science and technology has tremendous role to play in advancing mm -hmm. blue economy. Um, as I show in my slides, it's all about a lot of it. It's technologies, right? whether it's a smart farm system, um, you know, whether it's using satellite, using um, mm. maybe basic technologies like CCTV cameras on board. Mm. Like, I think these have potential roles to play in terms of due diligence and looking at sustainability um, in our supply chain. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely support that. Okay, thank you very much. And I think that's quite a good uh, conclusion from our session, the case study. You can see we have a multinational company and we have a small fisheries village, which is smart village. All those can be able to utilize the science, technology and innovation. And I think from uh, Mr. Radia Ata, I think partnership 
from related stakeholders and who get involved, who create the knowledge to implement that. And I think one thing, if we have a similar goals, identify the definition of where we want to go, what is sustainable blue economy means, and the goals we would like to go toward together. We can identify the different names, <laughs> different projects, different uh, definition. Maybe it's the same thing, but we call it different, just like in our APEC economy. We have 21 economy with different languages, different uh, ecosystem, different environment. But when we be together here in APEC 20, 22, we go to our open, connect, and balance together in order to give the prosperity of the economy. So I thank the honorable speaker, the two, to chair the case study and show how any big or small, we can contribute to sustainability. Before we closing this session regarding sustainable blue economy, I would like to invite um, NASDA which is responsible of making the, uh, preparing the bag of goals on BCG. So how, how will this dialogue help uh, NASDA in order to be a policy partnership regarding in your uh, working group? So all of us that our dialogue will be contribute to our APEC economies. Dr. Lily, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Wendy Jen, for you know uh, hosting uh, co-hosting this webinar. Um, so well, I think for for NASA, which is the research institute, we are gladly to learn more from uh, you know policy side as well as the implementation side. Uh, so we can see that how science technology could support this important issue, which is a food um, system. And uh, we surely would like to be the partners uh, among APEC countries uh, into contributing to the science and technology development to promote the food system. Yes, so I think that that will be uh, something like briefly from NASA. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much and very grateful that you will get all our thoughts, our chair dialogue into uh, action at the APEC levels. So thank you all for participating and all the presentation and all the record, our, the organizing the technical, our technical people will send to your emails as your register. So looking forward with that. On this occasion, I would like to thank Ms. Monica Rohanwak, the Head of International Affairs Unit from Chile, Dr. Tawan Tanjai, Deputy Director, Department of Fisheries, Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative Thailand, Dr. Yuman Radiata, Chairman of the Agency of Marine and Fisheries Research and Human Resources, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries Republic of Indonesia, and Mr. Brad Gertpairo, Director of Sustainability Asia at Thai Union Group PCL. Thank you very much for your willingness to chair and participate. We learn from your experience and we will see how we can work together in the near future. On behalf of the organizing uh, group. We thank everybody to join us this morning session, but we will have the afternoon session also regarding food loss and waste. So we will have the lunch break and we come back at uh, 13, uh, 13 hour. And then we will share the dialogue looking at the food loss and waste toward a sustainable food system. Feel free to drop in the chat box. We will still open. So you, if you don't have time to share verbally, leave us in the chat box and we will get back to you. 
on behalf of the moderator, thank you all. Thank you, speaker. Thank you, all participants. Hope to see you in the afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. สวัสดีค่ะ from Thailand. <laughs>